Hello everyone and welcome to this week's I Can't Believe That Happened. Um, so I think we're in what, one month of quarantine? So I hope you're enjoying the episodes. I'm trying to crank them out as quick as I can. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, I've been very excited about this one. I've been alluding to it for a while and I think you'll understand why. We're going to go all the way to Leonardo da Vinci. And I think one of the things that excites me the most about this particular episode is it has such ramifications to right now. So if you can head over to the show notes, um, especially if you go over to um, it's invisible, not broken.com, which is my other podcast, but in there, you'll find the show notes for, I can't believe that happened. And I really recommend going over there because we're getting into a period of history. That's very well documented. And not only is it well documented, it's also well reviewed. Like it's been looked at a lot since then, as you know, you've obviously most likely heard of Leonardo da Vinci. What you might not know is some of the things that are being used right now by NASA, by Google, um, they're based a lot on his designs. So if you can head on over and take a look, I have videos of some of the recreations, and I'm also gonna have photos from his codex, which are his notes, um, and you'll be able to see his plans which is really cool. So if you think about like something like the Mars Rover, you're going to want to design for something that can't be plugged in necessarily. It's not going to be able to go to get gas. Um, the NASA exploration robots, the planetary robots, they're not going to be able to just plug in. So the really cool thing about all of this is as we're looking forward, and I mean way far forward, we have to look backwards so that we can see what people were doing before the power sources that we rely on now were used so that we can create technology for where we're going, which won't have what we've relied on. Okay. So that's my little intro. <laughs> um, I want to get right into this. So he was born in 1452 in Florence. There's a billion biographies um, that will do this far better service than I will. So the point I want to make about this is he was not born wealthy. He was, um, he was born in very difficult circumstances and he was not ever expected to really rise. He did have a very wealthy and famous father. His mother, um, it really depends on what you look at on, um, what you can say about what she was going through, but, uh, she was, um, yeah, this is a, uh, this is a hard one. Um, history is not always, uh, politically correct. And, um, she had a really rough time of it and he would never have gotten an education if it hadn't have been for his father um, pushing him forward. So let's just put it there. But he was never expected to really rise. Um, at the very best, if his father had never had any other children, which he ended up doing, um, Leonardo could have maybe expected to become a part of his father's business. What Leonardo had in common with other incredible humans um, who have made great strides in their fields is an intense level of curiosity. So his entire childhood was running around the hills um, learning as much as they could about Florence. If I said Tuscany in the beginning, please forgive me. I'm using a new camera and program, which does not let me press pause. This all has to be done in one take. So forgive, please. Um, he was born in Florence. Um, so he spent all this time going through caves and being scared. And like, there's this one great little antidote that he had seen a cave where he was afraid that maybe Medusa was in there or something terrifying. And he went in anyway, because he couldn't quite decide between fear and curiosity. Don't go into caves, by the way please. <laughs> Legal disclaimer. What I'm saying is being curious is awesome. Um, also being cautious enough not to walk into a cave you don't know. Also awesome. Um, but what I'm saying is, is people aren't just born brilliant. They're born curious. And the ones who become brilliant are the ones who don't lose their curiosity. And my other point about him not being born wealthy um, and expected to be educated is this point. I just finished reading Trevor Noah's um, book, Born a Crime, which uh, if you are old enough and um, or if you're listening to this as an adult, we do have some very curious adult listeners. Please pick up this book. It was amazing. But he made one point that I hope will stay with me forever, which is a parable about if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you give him a fishing pole, he eats for life. Uh, if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for life. Um, but if you Give him the pull. That's the that's the important thing is that you give someone a leg up, not necessarily holding them up the old time, but you give them the tool that helps them rise. So the tool that helped Leonardo rise beyond his curiosity, there's a lot of curious people out there who do not have the the tool to rise above. His tool was that he was had a 
father who was influential who got him into an artist workshop. And from there, he was able to educate himself and to rise. Um, okay, so that's my little background on Leonardo. If you're curious about his life, I highly recommend you to be curious about his life. Please go look it up. But uh, seriously, there are books that are a thousand pages about him and we're not going to do that. I only have five more minutes and we have three robots to cover. So we're going to go right into the thing that really shocked me and I felt pretty educated in history. Um, this podcast has taught me maybe I was not nearly as educated in history as I thought I was after four years of high school history and another five years of college history. Um, so I had never heard of the night. Have you heard of the night? I had not heard of the night. Um, Leonardo da Vinci built a robotic knight. And we do have a lot of historical records on this, not as much as uh, we're going to talk about the next, uh, the one that's really well documented later, but there is enough to really prove that this most likely happened. So, okay, here's the thing, full-size knight, full-size human knight. And its existence was discovered in 1957 by a historian named Carlo Pedretti. And this was designed in 1495. And the knight was full size. There's reports that it walked, sat, lifted its visor up and could move its jaw. Um, crazy, <laughs> right? Um, this is all done on a pulley system, which I find fascinating. Um, it was gears and pulleys. And this was made for the, oh, I'm not even gonna try it. Uh, Duke of Sforza. <laughs> it was the court of Milan. Um, and this is all made for a celebration. And in 2002, a robotics expert named Mark Rosheim, I'm so sorry, Mark, if I got that wrong, you, uh, you're amazing. I looked you up. Um, it, it seriously, look that name up um, in uh, uh, YouTube and you're going to find some amazing videos. So in 2002, he rebuilt this and it's pretty amazing. You can see the interior structure. I think what shocks me the most is how simple the interior structure is. It's amazing how complicated a machine you can build. If you just think about each part, as a skeleton, as just like gear pulley, and then everything else is just dressing. And you can really build some amazing things fairly simply. Okay, I'm gonna get faster, I promise. Uh, robotic cart. This was a 1478 design. And what I love about this is, please look up the Mars Rover. It's pretty close. Um, if you've been watching self-driving cars like I do, um, this is pretty neat. This is kind of the first self-driving car. And if you look at Mars Rover, you're gonna see some very close similarities. So um, this was designed in 1478. It was based on a clockwork design um, and there were pegs that were put into round holes that would help guide it. I am not good with mechanics, so I do not understand this well enough to really teach this to you. So I highly recommend if this fascinates you. There are so many videos on this and it's really cool. Um, this has been rebuilt a few times. And like I said, the Mars Rover is actually a pretty close approximation. So um, take a look at this. This is fascinating stuff. Okay, this is one of my favorite because I'm, Kind of a, an animal freak if you've seen any of my other videos about my little small uh, backyard farm. Um, but this is the one that's really documented. And I mean, very, very documented from multiple sources, which is kind of what you want when you're looking at historical documents. And that's the lions. There were three of them made. Um, they looked to be about life size. And the first two, they were automated. They were, they were actual robots. And it's kind of cool because they walked 10 steps. And they could do this on their own through a wind-up gear system. The first one was made for the French King Louis, um, I believe the seventh, in 1509. Um, and it's that they could rear up on their hind legs and that they would present him with a lily, which is nuts. It's really cool. And if you know about France and their systems, um, the lily is their flower. So that was really, really neat. Um, the second gift was for Francois the first, um, when he visited it, for, um, in, uh, Lyons, uh, France, that's a great little city, um, in 1515. And the King was so impressed with the mechanical pet. He offered Leonardo a permanent home and that's where Leonardo spent the rest of his days was in France. Um, okay. So the cool thing is, is one of our sources for this existing is Michelangelo, right? <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. And he had, uh, written extensively on the design and the lion's abilities. So this is all very, very cool. Um, in 2019, the lion was remade for the Italian cultural Institute in Paris, and it was 10 feet long and seven feet tall. Okay. So please, again, go over to the show notes, hit subscribe, um, please share these videos with your friends, family, teachers. Um, and if I got something wrong, remember, I always say one thing wrong. <laughs> always. P 
put it in the comments. I really recommend you to always research, no matter who's telling you something. It's really good just to get in the habit of taking a look. So I always put one thing for you to find that was completely false. And um, I'm going to be giving out prizes when you put it into the show notes, comment on the show notes below and let me know what I got wrong. If there's something I un unintentionally got wrong, it happens. I promise always. Um, go ahead and put that in as well. I like gentle criticism. I do read everything that I possibly can get my paws on. So I do take it into account, but please be kind. I have three feelings left. Be nice to them. Um, again, share, subscribe, hand over to friends. Have a great week. And thank you so much for watching and listening. I am almost done with my research for this season of the history of robots. I'm curious what you want to learn about next. I was kind of thinking the history of magic and stage magic um, or the history of the circus. We did that before, but I don't feel like I did it well enough. So if you have an idea you want to float me, please, I will pay attention. Have a great week, everyone. Take care of yourselves. And um, yeah, I'll see you in a few weeks when I have the next episode.